<laughs> hey. hey, how's it going? It's going all right. Oh boy. Okay. So first of all, thank you so much, all of you guys, for yes. being part of this. Yeah, yeah. This is this is an incredible journey that we're on right now. Jeff contacted me about this. Was it five weeks ago? It feels like a minute ago, really. <laughs> <laughs> and it went by so crazy. And it just started off as a simple, simple request, a, a little idea that you had about both of these casts getting together to read the respective first scripts. And um, it, it seemed like a no-brainer. I mean, it was just, I thought, hey, yeah, sure. How, how hard could it be? And uh, <laughs> it was harder than it looked. But, <laughs> but just, just so you, uh, for those of you who don't know who we are, mm -hmm. let me do a quick uh, introduction. I'm Jeff Yang. Uh, I'm actually Hudson Yang's father. That's how people refer to me these days. Uh, and uh, I have had the great pleasure of being a part of the Fresh Off the Boat journey from uh, a little off to the side in the dark, watching as my son and incredibly, uh, all of his incredibly talented uh, co-stars have created six years of history. And I've also had the great opportunity of watching something very similar occur uh, up north in Canada with Kim's Convenience and have had the chance to make friends, not just with, uh, with Paul, Paul Lee, uh, Appa, but with the entire uh, incredible cast of that show. And so it just made sense that in this Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, uh, a special and difficult one for all of us, we want to do something to show solidarity, North and South, uh, not just with other Asian Americans and with our arts community, which is who's benefiting from this, uh, but honestly with uh, so many people who are in a state of anger and rage and despair right now for any number of reasons, uh, the black community, uh, which is, has been facing s some just shocking tragedy. Uh, we felt we needed to do something to do something together and to show unity. Uh, and Paul uh, has been a, a great partner in all of this. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, again, you know, it, it's it, when you have strong leadership, uh, when you have somebody who's doing the heavy lifting, it's it's really, really easy to sort of to to assist. And I was honored to to that you asked me you approached me to to help sort of wrangle up uh, the Canadian side of things as it were, and um, you know a lot of times I I became an unwitting uh, producer in all of this because I think the original ask was hey do you want do you think would you be interested in being part of a table read and I thought yes yes a thousand times yes great can you handle the Canadian side of things <laughs> and so thus began my journey uh, as a reluctant this is the first thing I've ever sort of produced. And it's been an absolute eye opener. Uh, great skills were learned. Great people I've met. Uh, get a chance to work with Jeff and the wonderful people at Seed and Spark, and the different organizations that we are, will be supporting through this initiative. Um, East West Players, uh, uh, Visual, oh, sorry, VC, yeah. Visual Communications, and of course Real Asian up in Toronto. Um, and this is all for great cause. And it's like Jeff says as well. We need to do these things together. We need to show unity. We need to show that there's there is some joy and some hope in this world. When you see these two shows reflected up on the screens as well, um, it, it's almost an ideal state. This is where we we'd strive to go to be at, and um, it's not lost on us right now. The absolute dumpster fire that is happening right now and the rage. Um, but hopefully, we can bring some levity into your lives as well, and to show that you know that there is. There, there can be hope, there can be joy, there can be laughter in the midst of all this. And to really hold on to those things too, while at the same time showing our support for other communities. So here we are, Jeff, you with your funky headset. <laughs> I am in my geeky basement um, and I'm so excited to, to get this started. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say uh, if you guys uh, have not done so yet, uh, check out the campaign pages uh, from Seed and Spark. There's one for Canada uh, and Canadian currency, of course, that is benefiting uh, our great friends at, at Real Asian, uh, the uh, people who curate and present uh, the Toronto Real Asian International Film Festival uh, and a program called Unsung Voices. Mm -hmm. And our hope is that this will actually uh, fund entirely a, a full year of training uh, young people, how to be filmmakers, how to be media artists, how to be performers through that program. Uh, and then on the U.S. side, uh, you'll see links for that coming through too. Please donate 
uh, there because it supports ESOS players, visual communications, two incredible arts groups, all of them have been hard hit in this time. And if you donate anything, uh, you will get a link to join the Q&A uh, with both casts after this show. Yeah, that's an exclusive. That's something yeah. you don't want to miss. And <laughs> that, that's going to be curated by Andrew Fung, who plays Kim Chi on uh, Kim's Convenience. Uh, he is a master. He's a three-time Canadian Screen Award winner. And he is a master at moderating events. I've seen him do it in person. He's great. He's fantastic. You're going to learn a lot at this Q&A afterwards. Uh, so please donate and you'll be sent a link. Uh, uh, Jeff, I believe there is a certain cutoff point, though, for, the, for that link for the donations. And it would be at about um 6 45 pacific time 9 45 eastern time so if you're enjoying what you're seeing and you want to you want to keep going and listen to that q a please donate and you'll be sent a link uh so that you can you can watch it um All and right. uh yeah without further ado uh, we're gonna be starting soon uh patrick kwok chun who's a very young very talented actor a lot of you will recognize him from star trek discovery as lieutenant gen reese um, he actually, here's a trivia bit, he played Jung in the stage version of Kim's Convenience when we were on tour. He will be narrating for both of the cast and reading stage directions and other characters in there. So I'm just going to introduce him and then I'll throw it over, I guess, is that it, Jeff? Are we yeah. ready to, to rock and roll? We're ready to rock and roll. All right. Thank so you. without further ado, we'll, we'll jump out and jump back on with the stage, a live stream reading of uh, Kim's Convenience, the first episode, The Gay Discount. It's not awkward at all. Just be by myself. Here we go. Hey, Paul. Hey, how's it going, Patrick? Good, man. Kim's Convenience, episode 101, Gay Discount. Written by Inns Choi and Kevin White. Cast list, Appa, Paul, played by Paul Lee. Amma, played by Jean Yoon. Jung, played by Simu Liu. Janet, played by Andrea Bang. Kim Chi, played by Andrew Fung. Shannon, played by Nicole Power. Kevin, played by Ben Bolshevar. Roger, played by Michael Musi. Enrique, played by Rodrigo Fernandez Stoll. And is everybody here? Michael's not here. All right. Let's, 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 let's wait a little bit. <laughs> Rod is here, but Michael isn't. I kind of look like Michael. So you, you kind of do. Like you kind of do. <laughs> Auspicious beginnings. There he is. There he is. <laughs> hey, guys. All right. Shall we begin? Let's do, Let's do it. Let's do it. Cold open. Interior store day. Appa is restocking cookies when two gay men, Roger and Kevin, enter. Hello, Mr. Kim. Oh, Kevin, how can I help you? Oh, this is my friend, Roger. Oh, hello, Roger. I am a Mr. Kim at DC Jamai store. Nice to meet you. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you before, but uh, I'm in an acapella group. Hmm. Uh, we were in an acapella group. Of course. We're performing for Pride Week, and we would love to put up our poster in your window. Kevin hands up a poster. Hmm. You group is called Gay Town Boyd? Yes, it is. And yes, we are. So um, can we put this up or not? Yes, uh Messy poster, huh? Who may get the refund? Appa hands the poster back. Is this because we're gay? Well, of course it isn't. It's okay. Uh, don't mind. No, I have a, a no problem with the gay, but I have a problem with a parade. Traffic, garbage, noise. Yeah. If you is the gay, why can't you be quiet, respectful gay? Hmm? Like a Anderson Cooper, you know, like a uh, Neil Patrick Harris, you know, uh, they are all the gay, but they don't yelling to me. They is the gay. <laughs> so it, it's yeah, not Kevin. Um... Kevin. Some people don't like Korean, but we don't make a big parade yelling at the people. We are Korean. We are Korean. <sighs> Mr. Kim, you're not homophobic, are you? Roger. What? What word are you using? Uh, homophobic, Mr. Kim, this is a discrimination against the homos. It's a hate crime, and I'm reporting it. Roger starts towards the door. What? What? Report? Yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. I'm not a homo... Uh, homo pebic, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, if, if I am a homo... homo... homo pebic, then why I... why do I... why do I give a 
gay discount. I'm sorry. Yeah, if I'm a homo homo bobo, then why I having gay discount? Huh? Yeah, fifteen percent gay discount only for the gay pride week. Roger takes a pack of gum and puts it on the counter, as if to call Appa's bluff. So, how much would this be? Regular, one dollar. But for you, with a gay discount, eighty-five cents, please. And how do you know if someone's gay? <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. You have gaydar, Mister Kim. Yeah, I have a gaydar, one hundred percent guarantee. Uh, well, we'll be sure to spread the word. Roger puts the poster back on the counter. And the poster? Appa slides the poster back towards Roger. You can do better. End of cold open. Act one. Interior house. Living room. Day. Appa and Amma have just finished eating breakfast. Amma is clearing the table while Appa begins mm -hmm. to head to the staircase, leading to the store with a cup of coffee. Janet descends from her room, carrying her camera and backpack. Oh, Appa, uh, I have a shoot for school this weekend. I was wondering if I can borrow the van. Uh, what happened to, oh, good morning, Appa. Oma, you look pretty today. Oh, thank you, Appa. Uh, that's from Janet. Oh, thank you, Janet. But I say, you do look pretty, Amma. And can I have the van? No. But Appa. Stop. One second. He exits. And he's not coming back. Janet, you coming to church Sunday? The church is not only for to worship the Jesus. That's a side benefit too. Mm -hmm. Janet. You can make lots of friends at the church. Friend who is a girl. Friend who is a not a girl. Amma picks up a church directory from the table. Amma, I'm not going to church to hook up with guys. No, 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 not hook up, just, you know, hook around. No, no, church directory. Oh, so many nice boys to choose from. Mr. Sun's nephew, Georgie. Mm. Look, he's a captain of a church frisbee team. Amma, I don't need your help finding a boyfriend. Then no. Where's your cool Christian Korean boyfriend, huh? Okay. okay, first of all, there's no such thing as a cool Christian Korean boyfriend. They don't exist. What you talking? If they're cool and Christian, they're not Korean. If they're cool and Korean, they're not Christian. And if they're cool Christian and Korean, they're girls. Uh, Jung is cool Christian and Korean. Is he a girl? So you're suggesting I date my brother? When I was your age, I go to church, find a Jesus, find cool Christian Korean boy, and uh, we hook around. Amma, can you please stop saying hook around? Well, if you not, if I not hook around with your appa, you will not be born. Interior store day. Appa is working when Enrique approaches with a lot of items. He has a slight Hispanic accent and tends to trail off at the end of his sentences. Appa is tallying up all the items throughout the scene. Hi, um, I was told that you are supporting gay pride here and I had 50% discount this week or something like that. Did you say, yeah, if I say anything? What? Oh, I, um, you having a 50% discount this week or, or something like that or something, is it for it? 15%. And the start, start, keep talking to end of a sentence. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> sorry. My bad. It's still 15% uh, discount, true? Yeah. But uh, only for the gay. 26 of 50. You want the bag? Oh, is that with the discount? No. You want the bag? Uh, yes, I, I do want a bag. But what... Um, why, why not the gay discount? It's only for the gay. You are not the gay. Hello? <laughs> I'm not the gay? I am so the gay. <laughs> I've been told that I'm too gay sometimes. You would only pretend. 
Are you for real? 100% a guarantee not to gay. No oh. discount. Okay. <laughs> this is not over. Enrique puts money on the counter. Appa takes it and makes change. It's not even the star of it not being over. Exterior. Car rental agency. Detailing garage. Day. Jung and Kimchi are looking at something in the back of the car. Huh. Pick it up. You pick it up. No, it's it's kind of the tradition here that the new guy picks up the dead stuff. This really happen a lot? Enough that there's a tradition where the new guy picks up the dead stuff. Jung cautiously kicks the door frame. Nothing. You sure it's dead? Uh, we usually find out when the new guy tries to pick it up. Hey. They turn to hey. see Janet in the doorway. What are you guys doing? Uh, your brother's here about to clean the car. You guys get lunch? I don't know. Are we? My treat. As long as you use your employee family discount thingy to get me a car. <laughs> what's wrong with Appa's van? More like what's wrong with Appa. I, I'm 20, and he still won't let me drive the van. I drove the van when I was 13. You stole the van when you were 13. No, oh, we stole the van when you were 13. Yeah, technically, if your family owns it, it's not stealing. So can you get me a rental? Depends. Where are you whining and dining me? Come on. You owe me. <laughs> For what? I'm seriously overparented because you're not around. Hey. Hey, I still get my fair share from Amma, okay? Oh, yeah, but when's the last time you talked to Appa? When's the last time you talked to me? Ah, uh, it was the night you stole money from the store. Uh, yeah. Sorry, too soon? So you're never going to talk to him again? It's working so far. Shannon enters. Hey, uh, I just got a strange call. Oh, hi. Who's this? Uh, this is my sister, Janet. She's taking me to lunch. <sighs> hi, Janet. I'm Shannon, Jung's manager, and I like to thank friend. And, uh, but as a friend, I should tell you that the manager <laughs> would probably say it's only employees back here. I get it. Sorry. I know it's hard for some people who grew up in the inner city and are rebellious by nature, but rules are rules, understood? Understood. Good, good. Understood. <laughs> understood in the hood. <laughs> okay, uh, nice to meet you. Oh, and uh, the weird call. A, a customer wanted to know if we'd seen her pet ferret. Beat, kimchi slowly closing uh, the door. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say no. Interior store day. Appa is working when Mr. Chin enters. Jamaican customer shops in the background. Ah, oh, and look what the cat drag in. Oh, Mr. Chin, how's it going? I uh, can't complain. Mm. How's uh, your business? Which one? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, kidding aside, Mr. Kim, business has never been better. Almost too good. A gay pride week, very busy. Yeah, me too. Deja, good for business. Remember when we stopped? No gay in sight. Mm. Where they all come from? Immigration? Refugee? Ah, uh, it's more popular now. Huh? Everyone switching side. Man becoming woman. Woman dressing like a man who like a woman. Ah, so confusing. For example, if a gay man discover he is transsexual. Yeah. Then if he has a sex change and becomes a woman. Okay. Then discover she is actually transgender. Then... Wait. What's the difference between a tra transgender and a transsexual? Oh, 
well, I don't know, Mr. Kim, what is the difference between a trans agenda and a transsexual? No, this is not a joke, Mr. Chin. I ask you a real question. I don't know. A Jamaican customer approaches with her food items. Excuse me, the word up and down the street, you're having a 15% discount. Uh, true. Uh, sorry, I can't hear what you're talking. What, me talking? Uh, what both of you is a talking. No one can understand what the hell you're talking about it, for heaven's great sake. What? Lord of mercy. Can you tell me the 15 discount true or what? Oh, yeah, it's uh, true, but uh, only for the gay. What? That's illegal. Well, Anti-straight. When's me getting me discount then? Oh, uh, February. Black History Month discount. That's the shortest month of the year. But it's a longer during leap year, so take full advantage. Exterior store, night, transition. A pop can is thrown in the garage. A dog is getting walked. A cyclist comes to a stop. A city bus goes by. We land on the Kim's Convenience Store sign. Interior store, night. Janet approaches the counter from the back to find job applicant standing there. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you. Um, that's okay, I just wanted to drop off my resume. Um, okay. Another job applicant enters with uh, his resume as well. Hi, I'm here about the job. Sorry, I think there is a misunderstanding. We're not looking for any help. Amma now enters from the back. Oh, yes, he is. Hi. Hi. Uh, good to see you both. First question, very important for job. Do you go to church? Mm -hmm. Amma, you can't ask that. Uh, that's okay. I don't mind. Uh, yes, I go to church. Mm. It's where I saw your ad. Me too. The two men size each other up slightly competitively. What ad? Good, good. Cool. Christian. Korean. Oh my god. I'm so sorry about this. Janet starts to leave. Janet! Amma... <sighs> Oh. Should I do? Should I do? Janet, you're not even trying. If you don't mingle, you stay single. Do these guys know that I'm the job? You should say thank you. No? You don't know yet, but Oma is doing you a big favor. Uh, Appa enters from the back. Hey, what's that happen? Oh, the usual. Oma's ruining my life. Hey, what you doing? Helping find a boyfriend. All right, Sam. Yeah. Janet is not a baby. Huh? She's now full balloon grown up woman. She don't need you helping find a boyfriend. Thank you. Huh. How can she have a boyfriend when she's a takeover store? I'm not taking over the store. What's wrong with the store? Nothing's wrong with the store, but... Then take not... over. But how she can take over store if she have a baby? You have a baby? What? No! Well, after she married, she had many babies. Maybe we'll just, we'll come back at another Let's time. Let's be clear. Or... I'm not taking over the store, and I'm not having many babies, okay? The opening is now closed. Janet grabs her backpack and exits through the front door. Appa looks at job applicant number one and another job applicant number two. Annyeonghaseyo. Annyeonghaseyo. We have a 15% gate discount only for this week. It's a lucky day for you. Oh, I'm not gay. Hmm. It's okay. Sometime, gay take time. End of Act 1. Act 2. Interior store day. Appa is counting cash, wrapping some bills in elastics, and jotting down the totals in his little red accounting book. He seems surprised by how little he has. He looks through the receipts again when Enrique returns with Boy Toy, his boyfriend. Hi. Remember me? I'm here Hi. for my discount. And Hi. he is my proof. Papa, gla Papa glances at Boy Toy, unconvinced. What's your favorite movie? Um, uh, it's uh, Gary Shack. We said Bill Murray? Not gay. What? He, he, just, he just doesn't want to give me the discount, okay? Not gay. Young Bill Murray is very hot. 
you're the only one that thinks that. What What are you saying? I know you say it was college, knew NorCal weren't serious, but you talk about her all the time. Okay, she's a lesbian. Maybe you're both on that almost gay, almost lesbian part of the spectrum. Yeah, spectrum. Oh, my gee. How did this turn into a thing? That was nothing. Oh, sound like a something to me. So no, so no discount? No, <laughs> no. If he pay, discount. Everyone happy? Oh, I am not happy. I am not happy at all. Interior car rental agency. Front counter, day. Jung and a male employee are working when Amma enters. Amma? Hi, Jung. We have to talk. Oops. Amma walks right past the counter and straight into Shannon's office. Amma, Amma, you, you can't go in there. Close door. Amma, I'm not closing the door. This is my manager's office. Amma it's, shuts the door, locks it. It's family emergency. Wait, is everyone okay? No, it's a Janet. What happened? She is going to die. Alone. Okay, I'm a, the Janet being single is not a, a family crisis. She stopped listening to me. You have to talk to her. No, I don't, and you need to back off. But the Janet is... Is 20 years old. Okay, she'll figure this out on her own. All you're doing is pushing her away. Is that what you want? Then what? Hmm? Not do anything, then just... Uh... Shannon tries to open uh, her hello, own Hello, uh, excuse me. We are here first, sorry. I'm a, no, that's that's my boss. I am his mommy. Excuse, thank you. Oh, okay. I I, I just need my insulin. I have more minute, please. Okay, I'll just I'll just have an orange. <laughs> Interior store day. Appa is behind the counter, going through his little red accounting book with a printing calculator. Things don't add up. Therese, a drag queen, is shopping in the background. She approaches the counter. Hi. Hi. I can't find the price on this. How much is it? Oh, normally it would be uh, $4.99, but uh, this week we have a discount only for the... Uh... What do you eat? Come again? Uh, you eat uh, what kind? Uh, transgender? No, I'm a drag queen. Oh, you eat a man dressed like a girl? A woman. Yeah, why? Why you do like this? Oh, um, I don't know. Feels like me. Feels like home. Always has. Oh. I'm Therese. I am a Mr. Kim. Oh, Korean. Annyeonghaseyo. Oh, very good, Therese. Annyeonghaseyo. <laughs> I'm just going to pick up a few other things. Okay. Where you come from? Church. Hmm. Yeah. I think uh, there is a steal. Steal? Yeah. Money is uh, missing. Check. Huh. Exterior store. Day. Janet gets out of the rental car parked next to Kim's convenience in front of Appa's van, carrying her camera bag and gear. She locks the car and heads into store. Interior store. Day. Janet enters the store. Oh, hi, Janet. Are you hungry? Um, I can make kalbi in your favorite. Stop. When you get the car? When you don't. When you didn't let me take the van. It's a rental. Where you get the money for rental? I got a discount from a friend. What a friend. Money is missing from store. You know what happened? Are you serious, Appa? Are you seriously accusing me of stealing money from you? No, no one needs to accuse. Even... <sighs> Forget it. Janet walks upstairs. Oh, 
Okay, uh, 22.95 minus a 15% gay discount. It dawns on Amma what the cause of the missing money might be. A gay discount. Well, thank you very much. Very nice meeting you, Mr. Kim. Okay, see you. Therese exits. Amma hits up on the shoulder. What? He's not a woman. Gay discount is missing money. Appa realizes Amma is right. I chum. You have to tell Janet you're sorry for saying she's a steal. I never say she's a steal. Oh, you make her think you think she's a steal? No, I make her think I think money is missing. I never think she's a steal. I wonder, but I never think. Big difference. No difference. Ah, I wonder if you are crazy don't mean I think you are crazy. <sighs> Appa, we are pushing Janet away like a dog. Amma walks away in frustration. Yeah, we don't wonder if he just steal. We know he just steal. Interior house, hallway, day. Amma is knocking on the door to Janet's room as Appa approaches up the stairs. Janet? Janet? Now she is a runaway. I didn't run away. Leave me alone. Okay. Appa turns to leave. Appa, you have to say something. Hmm? You say you was sorry. I don't need to say sorry. Nobody steal nothing. But you thought I did. No, I wonder if you do. Amma <laughs> slapped up on the shoulder. Interior I'm... house, Janet's room day, sir. I'm not Jung. Why are we talking about him? This is a not about a him. I'm not the one who stole. I'm the one who stayed. And it's like I'm being punished for that. I'm not a punish. I just a talking. You're talking to the wrong person. Yeah. I talking to you. I talking to Oma. I talking to Dor. <sighs> Janet, we is sorry. Huh? We know you as a no steal. And who you hook around with is up to you. Janet huh? opens the door. Amma, thank you. I appreciate it. Appa, I know it'll kill you to apologize. So return the car and we'll call it even. Return the rental car? Mm -hmm. The car is out front and the address is on the keys. Deal? You fill up gas? Yep. No scratch? Nope. Okay. Watch a store. Appa leaves. You do know why I told Appa to return the car, right? Yeah. So he don't have to say sorry. No. So he has to talk to Jung. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. <gasps> Interior car rental agency. Shannon's office, day. Shannon is on the phone. In the background, we see Appa walk in. Oh, finally, Peggy. Yes, I want unlimited texting, but I don't need unlimited talk in the Americas, just just North America. No, no, please don't put me on hold. Uh, hey. Hey, what's up? Okay, here's the thing. When I was 16, my dad kicked me out, or I might have run away, it's all kind of blurry. Um, okay, uh, we're sharing. Uh, well, when I was 15, I got a perm. It really did not suit me. No, no, um, no, that's my dad. He points at Appa. Uh, okay. I, I didn't even know he knew I worked here, all right? But I, I can't talk to him. Can you handle this? It's, it's just I've been trying to upgrade my cell phone plan for the last 40 minutes. Please, I will, I will owe you big time. Okay, fine. I, but I'm talking to Peggy, and I want unlimited texting in Canada and the U.S. Not Brazil, not Costa Rica, not Paraguay. Got it. Right. Shannon gets up to go serve How Appa. How big your family? It's the last one. Thank you. Interior. Car rental agency front Mr. office. Kim. So nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you too, Miss Shannon. Uh, before you say anything, family is tricky. 
I have an uncle, a fisherman, always reeked of fish, so I never wanted to hug him. And then one day he went out on his boat and we never saw him again. We just never saw him again. I mean, the occasional postcard from Mexico. But the point is sometimes I yearn for fishy hugs. Do you understand? No, I'm here to return car rental. Oh, oh, of course you are. <laughs> Let me take care of that. Shannon takes the keys and heads to the back. Appa <laughs> looks around the office as he waits. He seems drawn to a staff photo with the caption, your discount family. He appears to stare at it for a beat when we realize he's looking at the Keurig style coffee maker below the picture. Shannon returns with a piece of paper. Oh, it's uh, free? Uh, yeah, help yourself. Do you need a lift? Uh, yeah, okay. First I make a copy. <laughs> End of act two. Interior store, night. Amma and Janet are behind the counter when Appa enters. So? What? How did the drop-off go? You see anybody there? Yeah. Who? Shannon, manager, drive me home. She talk about the uh, Cape of Breton, PC Uncle, Peter Music. Huh. Did you see anyone else? He's a car renter, not the international airport. Just then, job applicant from earlier enters. Hi. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry, so sorry. No, I... um, I'm... I get this. <clears throat> Look, you're a cool Christian Korean boy, but even if uh, Mrs. Kim like you, even if I like you, doesn't matter. Janet has to like you. Hmm? You understand? Um... You pick a restaurant? You okay with the Duke? Love it. Bye, Emma. Bye, Appa. Stop. What is your Korea Day of Independence? Um, August 15th, 1945. Gwakbak Jol. Okay. Have a good time. I told you he'd ask. End of episode. Thank you. <laughs> wow, thank you so much, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that. That was episode 101, Gay Discount. That's what kicked us off in uh, the uh, fall of 2016. I think it was October. Um, I said that. It sounded so Canadian in my ears. October. Um, up next, we're going to have uh, Hudson Yang and Simu Liu. Uh, they're going to have a few words and share a little bit of banter between shows while we get ready for the reading of Fresh Off the Boats pilot episode. So remember, if you haven't already done so, please, and if you can, if you want to, donate, click on the links below. Um, if you donate an amount, you get uh, a Zoom code to join us in the exclusive Q&A afterwards with both casts of Kim's Convenience and Fresh Off the Boat. And I'll throw it over to uh, Hudson. There he is. Hey. What's up, buddy? What? Look that at you. That was so great. That was so funny. Thanks, bro. And there he is, the other dude. So I'll leave it hey. to you guys. <laughs> Yo. What's up, man? Dude, your your um video game squad is blowing up the YouTube they comments really right are. now. They really are. It's, it's kind of crazy. Tell me the story. Tell me the story. Who are these people that you run with that are um that mm. are that are so adamant on trolling you right now? Oh, so um, I don't know if you knew this, but I started streaming on Twitch a little bit ago, and these are the people uh, who just okay, okay. who watched every time, right? So these are like I made a Discord, and we just talked a lot, and we we, we, we became pretty close, and so now they know mm -hmm. all these secrets about me that a lot of people don't know about. Big mistake on my yeah. Account. Who do you have a crush on? I think I, was, I, I know was reading, we don't we, don't, we, we should not about that in front of. Are you sure? People. I feel like we should talk yeah, about yeah. just like it's kind of I, important that maybe. See, but oh, the thing okay, is, look, they, the person found out. 
and it didn't go down the way that I'd hoped it went down. So it, it, yeah. I see. I see. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. hey, say no more. Stay no more. Yeah, and no um, you know, you just gotta get back on that horse. Son. Yes, get, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> as it says, if you don't mingle, you stay single. So if you don't mingle, you stay single. <laughs> Words of wisdom are right there. Words of wisdom, Listen, yeah. um, um, you know, this this is a bit of a funny time for us to be for us to be meeting up and 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 doing the stream and and it's you know great that we're here it's great to see you guys and and to be able to share in some laughs but um yeah. you know obviously we we should speak about what's happening right now what do you i think? mean yeah there's a lot going on right now and it's really difficult for a lot of people i mean mm -hmm. i did yeah i think before we start with the next table read it's good to take a moment to speak in solidarity with the uh black community a little bit that's right the uh the recent killings of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd in the U.S., as well as Regis Korchinski, uh, Paquette in Toronto, have prompted enormous grief and rage across both of our nations. I mean, I think also, especially with Fresh of the Boat, which you know has a lot of fans in the Black community and has a lot of had a lot of support from the Black community, and really wouldn't be the same show without you know the Black culture and a lot of that. We want to stand, mm -hmm. stay that we stand together with the Black community, like full, fully, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Even as Asian North Americans have faced bias and, and, and harassment in this time of COVID-19, and I'm sure you've been no stranger to that, Hudson, you've seen it all over the internet, maybe even experienced it yourself, um, you know, we're also seeing the continued oppression of Black North Americans. So you and I have both been very outspoken about issues as they pertain to our community, the Asian community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think to our audience, we just, we, we do want to say thank you so much for listening and for hanging with us. But as allies, I think we also feel that it's our duty to amplify the voices of a community that has experienced racism on such a systemic level. And to also, as individuals, commit to taking the time to look inwardly and reflecting on ourselves. Right, I mean, Black Lives Matter. We hear you, we see you, and I wanna urge everyone who is watching this here with us, you know, just, we all want to support, like, yeah. So have everyone here to support and, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Whew. Um, Oof. I know that's, I know that's a touch yeah. heavy for, um, for what this is, but, but mm -hmm. yeah, thank you for, thank you for listening. And thanks for, thanks for going through that with me, Hudson. Yeah. Um, what are you, what are you up to these days? What's, what's quarantine like? I mean, not a lot Other to than, get up to. Streaming. How many? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can't really go anywhere. I mean, I, I know just as you have, I've been doing best to work out as much as I can. You're looking crazy. Um, I asked you for some advice earlier too, been taking it very seriously. Um, besides that, <laughs> playing a lot of video games. <laughs> um yeah video games yeah is it is it just apex or what, what's going on are you playing are you playing cod warzone playing, are you playing, playing animal yeah. crossing because that's I, what I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm super into right now i've seen a lot of your stories i just got animal crossing <laughs> haven't loaded it up haven't even started yet but i'm going to i'm gonna get down that grind but yeah playing a lot all right of hey let me know let me know if you ever want to come over to my island all right i'll hook you yeah. up i'll give I, i'll give you fruits <laughs> i'll give you turnips even though my turnips never sell for anything more than right. like you know 90. But hey, I don't know you need any, any that items. Means. I, I don't got know any of that means, but when I figure that out, I'll let you know. <laughs> you will, sign. Yeah. You will. Yes. yes. Um, how tall are you nowadays? Are you? Is there any more growing that's happening, or are you still six foot a million? Yeah, I'm, I'm still six foot a million. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, when mm -hmm. I first met Hudson, uh, it was I was visiting Jeff on the set of Fresh Off the Boat, and he was like he was like up to my shoulder, and I was like, ah, oh, this kid's cute. He's cool. <laughs> Literally, the next time I saw him. I was actually staying over at Jeff's house, and then I like I like go out <laughs> yeah. into the living room, and Hudson, six foot one, Hudson is like, "Hey, what's up?" And his voice is like completely different too. And I'm like, "Is this? Are you? Oh my god!" <laughs> it was weird, man. It was weird. And then you know, the next time I saw you was probably on the basketball court when you were playing at the uh, at the CCYA Celebrity Classic in Toronto last year. And then you were just like a Jeremy Lin. I was just you know, I was like, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, <laughs> I was not as good as basketball, but I was tall. That's all I really had, but. <laughs> yeah. Hey, all right, Dad. <laughs> there you go. Well, hey, first of all, thank you guys so much for uh, filling some airtime here and catching up a little bit. Uh, first of all, I, I want to say uh, it is so great to see you, Simu. Part of the reason we wanted you guys both on screen at the same time is because Fresh Off the Boat actually, you know, in its final season, uh, it's big connection actually uh, with Kim's convenience is you, right? <laughs> uh, you uh, 
you you are the cast member of Kim's Convenience who also is on Fresh Off the Boat. You're kind of like the, the living bridge between the two. Uh, and, you know, Ooh. frankly, uh, we as uh, Asian North Americans uh, are looking forward to the next big thing you're about to do. So oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> hope you're uh, having a good time in- Me too, the... if we ever shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> it'll happen, it'll happen. Um, well, we are about ready now for our, our uh, next table read. Uh, and we are so happy and so so just uh, delighted that the cast of Fresh Off the Boat is joining together for this. It was obviously, you know, it was a heartbreak for me to, to see the show, and but it ended on a really amazing note. And we're back for one night only. Um, I wanna urge you guys again, uh, if you can, please donate to the, um, Kim's Convenience uh, Canadian Currency Campaign, uh, which goes to support Real Asian. Please donate to the US Currency Campaign, which goes to support uh, ESOS players and digital communications. If you do so uh, before, uh, well, we're running a little late, so let's say before seven o'clock, then we will send you a link to the Q&A with the full cast. Um, but I wanna thank the whole cast of Kim's Convenience for their read. They will be back uh, for the Q&A later. Uh, you guys are amazing, and it's continue to bear the torch. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm now going to bring on. Thank well, thank you, Simon. You're amazing. Um, I'm going to bring on now uh, Patrick, uh, who also narrates the um, second episode, uh, to introduce the uh, cast of what was then called Far East Orlando. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go. Oh my gosh. My heart's beating. It's been so long. Uh, Far East Orlando, pilot episode. Um, uh, we lost Patrick. Hang on. <laughs> we lost him, yeah. Uh, Patrick will be on, back on shortly. We'll start soon. Uh, and we have the whole cast of Fresh Off the Boat in, uh, in the backstage waiting to go. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I should note, by the way, Hudson and I are in the same house. <laughs> he's in a, he's at my computer and I'm at his. So all of you guys have been trolling each other in YouTube comments. Please note that I'm seeing his account and vice versa. All right, Patrick's back. <laughs> hey. Let's go. Let's Bye, guys. again. Far East Orlando, pilot episode, written by Nanachka Han, directed by Lynn Shelton. Based on the memoir, Fresh Off the Boat, by Eddie Wong. Cast list. Lewis, played by Randall Park. Jessica, played by Constance Wu. Eddie, played by Hudson Yang. Emery, played by Forrest Wheeler. Evan, played by Ian Chen. Fade in. Interior room, day. Close-ups of someone putting on a big-ass watch, gold neck chain, Orlando magic hat, starter jacket, cut wide to reveal all the bling is on Eddie Wong. He slides on pimp shades, pulls open a curtain, and we realize interior department store continuous. He's in the dressing room of a department store. He swaggers over to his mom, Jessica, and younger brothers, Emery and Evan. Mom, check it. Fresh as hell, right? Eddie, don't say hell. She also said butthole in the car. Shut up, Evan, you little Chinese narc. Mom, Eddie told me to shut Eddie, up. Eddie, don't talk about holes. Where's Emery? I like your jewelry. It's not jewelry, it's bling. Your watch is really big. <laughs> yeah, so I can tell people when it's time to check themselves. Please, Mom, can I get this? Uh, how much is it? She reaches to check a price tag dangling off his jacket. Exterior department store. Minutes later, the Wong family walks out of the store. Eddie wears a shitty dinosaur t-shirt and dorky shorts. Super bummed. You think money falls from the sky like rain? That hat costs more than your grandfather's house. You said I could have new clothes when we moved to Orlando. Your dinosaur t-shirt is almost new. And Tyrannosaur is cool. That'll be fine. We're not made for money. What the hell? Mom, don't say hell. Oh, shut up, Evan. And let go of me, sweaty hand. What are you so nervous about? End cold open. Act one. Establishing Orlando 1994 montage. 
Big Papa plays as we see white southern rednecks, Dis Disney World tourists, the boy band explosion, Orlando Magic Shack, all of which leads us to interior Dodge Caravan. Eddie is sitting in the back seat, headphones on. B.I.G. still playing in his ears. Eddie looks over at his family. His dad, Louis, and Evan sing along to something we can't hear. Emery is asleep. Jessica stares out the window. Grandma Wong munches on a bag of combos. Eddie takes off his headphones and is hit with the musical opposite of B.I.G. Ace of Bases, The Sign. I, I saw, saw the sign. sign. And, and it opened up my eyes, I, I saw, saw the sign. sign. God, stop it. Turn off the radio. Eddie, I know you're not excited to leave DC, but you're gonna love Orlando. I've been there for six months setting up the restaurant and I've grown to love it like the daughter we wished Evan had been. I don't know why we have to move. Why couldn't you keep going back and forth between Orlando and DC? Because I don't want to work for your mom's brother selling furniture for the rest of my life. Besides, we're family, we belong together. Your father's right. That's why we left Chinatown in DC. Left our family and friends to come here. Exactly. Left everything we know to come to a place where we know nothing and the humanity is not good for my hair. Right, okay. And for what? So your father can open a cowboy restaurant. Okay, it's called Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse and I can't wait for you all to see it. It's beautiful. It's big, brown, and beautiful. Like Shaq? <laughs> exactly like Shaq. I blame myself. I knew it was a bad omen when I saw that squirrel eat her babies on my wedding day. Exterior, cul-de-sac, afternoon. <laughs> Moving men walk boxes into the house. Eddie and Emery stand on the lawn, surveying their new neighborhood. A lot of white folks here. Not like back in DC. The only white people we saw there were lost tourists. Exterior, Chinatown, Washington DC, flashback. Eddie and Emery sit on the stoop of a townhouse. A white tourist couple walks by, map unfolded, loaded down with cameras. They stop and turns to the boys. White house? White house? Eddie and Emery look at each other. Exterior cul-de-sac, back to scene. Jessica walks up to the boys. The humidity is already affecting her hair in a negative way. You boys just gonna stand there or pick up a box and help? Mom, is there a Chinatown in Orlando? Jessica points to their house. You're looking at it. A pack of white women rollerblade up. Hi, welcome to the neighborhood. I'm Deidre, that's Amanda, that's Samantha, that's Lisa, that's Carol Joan. Welcome. Thank you, white woman, white woman, and white woman. I'm Jessica. Boys, stay close. Mommy might be in a fight. I got I Carol Joan. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I was expecting something more exotic, but I love the name Jessica. I had a sorority sister with that name. She died in a riptide accident. We dedicated a section of the highway to her. Where are y'all from? My parents are born in Taiwan, but my brothers and I are born in DC. A black Corvette pulls into a driveway. Marvin drives with Honey in the back seat, uh, in the passenger seat. She wears a short tennis dress. Camp. I don't roll with girls in dresses. I like it when they look regular. You also sleep with a nightlight. That's Marvin and his second wife, Honey. She used to be his dental hygienist, but wound up cleaning more than teeth. I heard she used to give tug jobs to the talking heads. I, um, are you all sisters? Anywho, we've got a motor. We go rollerblading every day. If you'd like to join us, give us a holler. They rollerblade off. Jessica turns to the boys. Hmm, the loudest one seems to be their queen. So, who's hungry? Interior Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, late afternoon. Over the top, all lassoes and canteens. Lewis wheels Grandma into her wheelchair through. The rest of the family follows. And the cactuses are planted in old spittoons. I wanted it to look authentic like the real Wild West. <laughs> the waiters used to wear spurs, but they were right at Achilles level, so we switched to black Reeboks. Right, Nancy? I got sliced up pretty bad. Oh. Eddie's POV, dead bears and a jackalope head are mounted on the wall. Dude, where the hell are we? I don't think Shaq eats here. Were there bears in the Old West? Grandma stares at the jackalope head. Ni tai man la. A subtitle reads, you were too slow. Where are all the customers? Uh, well, technically we're uh, still in our soft opening. <laughs> Louis, there's hardly anyone here. And that table is only drinking water. Hey, why you bitches not drink beer? The restaurant is doing well, okay, but not as well as it could be. Why didn't you tell me? 
because I didn't want to give you another reason not to move here. I should have married Oscar Chow. He has three dry cleaning stores. Oscar Chow is crazy gay and a steakhouse down here should be very successful. I just have to figure out why people aren't coming. Maybe it's the food. No, it's not the food. The food's perfect. Hector's a genius. He gives a thumbs up to Hector, who's working the grill in the kitchen. He's all choloed out with a big neck tattoo of a serpent choking a mouse next to the word muerte. Hector gives a sincerely enthusiastic thumbs up back. Interior, Wong Kitchen, next morning. Jessica packs lunch for the boys who eat breakfast. Her hair is not doing well. Eddie, wearing a notorious B.I.G. t-shirt, looks bummed. Evan turns to Emery. Can I sit next to you on the bus? Sure, if you want. Me and Emery are going to sit next to each other on the bus. You're on a different bus because you go to a different school, so I don't know who you're going to sit next to. Definitely not Emery, though. He'll be next to me. Shut up, Evan. Mom, why do you have to start school on a Wednesday? Why can't we wait until Monday? Why wait? You need to go to school so you could go to college so you can make lots of money. All you care about is money. You're all about the eggs. I am all about the eggs. Eddie, I'm going to tell you this only once. Money is everything. Anyone who says different is poor. Come on, you'll miss your bus. She hands them their lunches and looks Eddie in the eye. I want you all to be polite, respectful, and don't make waves. Why were you only looking at me? What? I'm talking to all of you. Mom, dude, you were looking right at me. Jessica forces herself to look at Evan and Emery, who look so sweet. She looks back at Eddie. Okay, I was talking to you. Why do all your t-shirts have black men on them? It's a Torius B.I.G. Me and him are both dudes with mad dreams. Just trying to get some respect in the game. Just trying to get a nut. An excited Lewis enters in undershirt and hairnet. <laughs> Jessica, I figured it out. Dad, how can we have to start school on a Wednesday? That's a great question. Go to school. Go, go. Go on. Go, 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 go. Okay. I was blow drying my hair and I figured it out. How the restaurant can attract bigger crowds. How? I need to hire a white host. Instead of people coming in and seeing a Chinese face and saying, huh? I thought this was an old West steakhouse. They see a white face and say, oh, hello, white friend. I am comfortable. Or they say, hello, white friend. Why are those other white friends taking your equipment? Oh, they're closing this place and opening up a lady foot locker? Makes sense. See, exactly, not welcoming. That's why no to your face and yes to a white face. Interior middle school, classroom morning. A school bell rings and we're in a classroom. Eddie stands next to the teacher, Mrs. Uveda. A sea of white faces stare back at him. Class, I'd like to introduce a new student. I know it's a little unorthodox, being a Wednesday and all, but I'd like, to, I'd like you all to give a warm Abraham Lincoln Middle School welcome to who, Angie Yi Call me Eddie. Call me Eddie. Interior, middle school, cafeteria lunch. Eddie walks past kids eating, talking, laughing. We also spot several kids eating Lunchables. He stops at a table where one kid, Walter, sits. Walter wears a plastic laminated hall monitor badge around his neck. Sup? Cool if I sit? No. Fine, but don't try to talk to me. I don't like kids. My best friend is a 40-year-old man. Eddie sits. He takes his Tupperware container out when a blonde kid who looks like his name would be probably Brock calls out. Yo, yo, Chinese kid, you're in my homeroom. Uh, what's your name again? Something Chinese? My name's Eddie. Eddie, you into B.I.G.? Yeah, oh, yeah, man, he's sick. Uh, I bought Ready to Die the day it came out. I went as a baby from that album cover for Halloween. Yo, come on, come, come sit with us. Yeah? Okay, man, cool. A white dude and an Asian dude bonding over a black dude, and I'm stuck here in no man's land. Eddie grabs his stuff and moves over to the new table. What's up? I'm Eddie. Hey, dude. Eddie. All the kids ad lib greetings back. For the first time, it seems like Orlando might not be that bad. And then he takes the top of his Tupperware off. Probably Brock recoils. Oh, what's that? Uh, this? It's Tenny for my mom. Oh, gross. That stinks. It's worms. Ying Ming is eating worms. Dude, get out of here. Go. Red-faced, Eddie walks back over to Walter's table, laughter spreading through the cafeteria. Oh, it didn't go well? The white people didn't welcome you with open arms? What? Sit elsewhere, B.I.G. Eddie picks up his stuff and slumps off. End of Act 1. Act 2. Exterior, cul-de-sac, day. The white women rollerblade down the street. 
One has a small dog on a leash. In the middle of the ba- uh, in the middle of the pack is Jessica, struggling not to fall and break her neck. I can't believe Jake slept with Brittany. He knew Palmer Woodward was using her as a part of a plot to destroy him and help Amanda take controlling interest of Melville's place. Right, Jessica? Yes. All of those white people sound like they're making mistakes. Oh, the school bus is here. Let's see how my boy's day was. Okay, sugar. Bye. Uh, Tape picket fences tonight. We'll discuss tomorrow. The women blade off as Eddie approaches. How was... They said my lunch smelled. Smelled delicious. No, they said it stank, Mom. I'd eat behind the gym where the janitor flies his kite. Exterior. Abraham Lincoln Middle School. Gym. Flashback. Eddie sits against a wall eating his Chinese lunch as a janitor flies a kite. This is nice. Exterior cul-de-sac. Back to scene. Eddie and Jessica are as we left them. Well, those kids just don't know, that's all. It takes time to get used to something different. I hate it here. I want to go back to D.C. Eddie, that's not possible. We're here now and we all have to make the best of it. Like I'm doing with these neighborhood women. You think I like pretending Carol Joan isn't carrying a baggie of dog poops in her hand? No, I don't. We all see them in there, rolling around. But I'm trying and you have to try too. You're never on my side. Eddie storms off towards the house. Eddie, wait. What is Melrose Place? Another bus pulls up and Emery and Evan get off. Emery holds hands with a cute 11-year-old girl, Kim. Mom, this is my girlfriend, Kim. Hi, Mrs. Wong. I'm gonna walk her home, okay? Bye, Mrs. Wong. They walk off. Evan looks at his mom. I have so much to tell you. Interior Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, evening. Lewis looks at a resume as he interviews Mitch. So, uh, Mitch, where are you from? Uh, here in Orlando, born and raised. Oh, I love Orlando. It's feisty. It's a nighttime town in a daytime dress. Jessica enters. Uh, Jessica, what are you doing here? I went rollerblading with Samantha in Alabama, and I realized white people have their own secret code. So maybe you're right. Hiring one could help the restaurant. It just has to be the right white. We are not a couple of country bumpkins. Excuse me? You think you can come in here and just do whatever you want and eat food for free and waste napkins? Take it easy. I don't like his for his eyebrows and he has a tricky forehead. How many girls have you gotten pregnant? Oh my God. Yeah, I've never gotten any girls pregnant. I have three young boys. Are we going to have a problem? No, I love boys. As friends, I am friends with boys. Like friend, boys, boys who are... So, sorry, my English isn't so good. Uh, can I have some water? Interior, Marvin and Honey House, night. Marvin and the Wongs, minus Grandma, sit at the table. The boys stare at Honey, who wears ridiculously tight pants as she sets down food. Jessica tries to tame her hair with bobby pins and failed. Oh, sorry. My hair and Orlando are in a fight. You know what will help that? A hat. If we all got Orlando magic hats. No hat. Stop talking about the hat. We're so happy you could all join us for dinner. Believe me, I, I know how it feels to be new in the neighborhood. I love your pants. Are they comfortable? Or is it tough to have that fabric pressed right up against your... <clears throat> um, so, uh, how, how long have you been married? <laughs> Four months. I used to be his dental hygienist, but I wound up cleaning more than his teeth. Hmm. I mean, maybe my triangle is more sensitive because three people came out of it. Uh, Are you sure Grandma Wong didn't want to join us for dinner? Oh, uh, no, uh, her favorite TV show is on and she didn't want to miss it. Interior Wong living room. Grandma sits in front of the TV, munching on combos, watching a woman sell clothing on QVC. Sparkle like the diva you are in this cake style pullover top. Grandma laughs hard, as if this were a hilarious joke. Interior, Marvin and Honey House, back to scene. Honey sets a bowl of gray mush and a bowl of orange crap on the table. Eddie and Jessica whisper to each other. What's that? No idea. Just smile, smile. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, we're uh, excited to be here and uh, for the future of Cattleman's Ranch. Do you know Mitch by any chance? White fella, uh, white face and arms and hands and body. Marvin spreads the gray stuff on a piece of bread. The boys watch him intently as if he's studying an animal in the wild, but afraid not, sorry. 
Eddie starts spreading gray stuff on a piece of bread. He winks at Honey, takes a bite, and starts gagging. He jumps up from the table and spits it out. Eddie! Oh, what is that? It's tuna fish, and that's mac and cheese. Eddie aggressively wipes his tongue with his napkin as Evan shovels spoonfuls of mac and cheese into his mouth. Mm, this is really good. Interior, Wong Kitchen, next morning. Eddie and Emery are finishing breakfast. Jessica enters, carrying a sick tray, towels, and Gatorade. Well, Evan's not going to school today. Apparently, he is lactose intolerant. His body is rejecting white culture, which I'm kind of proud of. Good job, Evan. She hands them Tupperware container and lunches again. Mom, no. I don't want Chinese lunch. I want white people food. You had white people food last night and almost threw up. The kids at school will get used to it. Eddie stomps out. We hear Evan groaning off screen. <sighs> I wish my sister lived here so we could smoke. Exterior, cul-de-sac, continuous. The boys walk towards the bus stop. Eddie tosses his lunch in a neighbor's trash can. What are you doing? You're not going to have any lunch to eat. I'll be fine. Kids don't tease you about your lunch? No, not yet. They will. People here suck. Totally. They walk past a kid who waves. Hey, Emery. Hey, what's up? Another kid, George, calls at them from the bus stop. Hey, Emery, coming to my birthday party next weekend? Hey, George, I'll be there. They arrive at the bus stop to find a smiling Kim waiting. Hey, boo, got you a soda. She hands Emery a 7-Up, and he just stares at his brother. I hate your guts. Want to come as my plus one to George's birthday party? Kim is a dance tournament in New Orleans. Interior Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse. Day. A smiling Lewis enters to find Mitch working the host stand. Mitch, hey, how's the lunch uh, crowd? Huh. It's the same. I think we have to give it time, you know, for the word to spread. No, I moved my whole family here for this. I need your Caucasian features to work now. My wife is not a patient woman. She is on my jock. Yeah, I hear you. My mom is the worst roommate. It's like if we're making toast, make both of us toast, you know? There's two slots. Are you sure there's not another reason people aren't coming? Like, maybe the food? No, the food is per It's not the food. The food is perfect. He looks towards the kitchen. Hector wears an undershirt, and whatever tattoo he has across his chest is completely blurred out. Hector gives another genuinely enthusiastic thumbs up. Interior. Wong, dining room, night. The Wongs, minus Emery, eat dinner. Evan is pale and has only saltines in front of him. Grandma is in the other room, watching QVC. Eddie shovels food in his mouth. I talked to my sister today. My brother. It's not new. There's no way that car is new. Lewis gets distracted by the TV Grandma's watching in the next room. It's a local TV show uh, with a guy walking on stilts through a car dealership. Where's Emery? He's having dinner at his girlfriend's house. She's Irish. He gets that from me. I once kissed a girl who auditioned for Riverdance. Eddie, why are you eating so much? I'm hungry. I, I can't even look at that. Didn't you eat your lunch today? Yeah, but I'm still hungry. Oh, okay. Well, how you like the Shaolong Bao I packed? It was really good. Liar! I didn't pack Shaolong Bao! Okay, fine. I threw my lunch away. Oh, I Eddie, can't come believe on. That's so wasteful, I man. I make you love my food. I need white people lunch. That gets me a seat at the table. And then you get a chance to change the rules. Represent, like Nas says. I'm not trying to eat with a janitor forever. I got big plans. First, get a seat at the table. Second, meet Shaq. Third, change the game. Possibly, possibly with the help of Shaq. Damn it, that was beautiful. You hit me in my heart, boy. <laughs> Okay, what's white people lunch? Exterior, grocery store, food for all, night. It's huge, glowing in the darkness, all fluorescent lights and music. Jessica and Eddie stand outside the entrance. What is this store so excited about? This is where Lunchables live, Mom. Shot from behind, they look like two humans about to enter the spaceship from Close Encounters. If we get separated, yell rape and I'll find you. End of Act Two. Act three, interior, food for all grocery store, minutes later. Rows and rows of food, Jessica and Eddie cautiously enter. Whoa. This is not how I like to shop. This place looks like a hospital. Oh, I miss the Taiwanese markets in DC. They make me feel so calm. 
Interior Taiwanese market, flashback. People are packed in the tiny store like sardines, unable to move, screaming in Chinese. Jessica stands in the middle of it, a serene look on her face. Interior, food for all grocery store, back to scene. Jessica and Eddie continue to walk down a spacious aisle. This air conditioning is nice though. A store employee appears out of nowhere with a sample tray. <laughs> Try our new almond milk? No, why are you so friendly, Orlando? Another store employee pops up holding cheese cubes. Go uh, goat Gouda sample? Back off, man. They see Lunchables as far as the eye can see. Wow, everything fits perfectly inside the box. Awesome. You want to fit in a box. That's so American. Why are you so American? Yet another store employee pops up. Fiesta's tortilla chip, free sample. No, wait, this is free? All these are free? Oh, where's the almond milk lady? You guys need a sign. She takes the whole bowl and pours it in her purse. Interior, Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, next morning. A commercial shoot is setting up. Lewis walks through. How you doing? Everything all right? <laughs> you good, Nancy? Can I have Saturday off? I play in a racquetball league. Nope. Hey, Joe, uh, no margaritas until after the shoot, okay? <laughs> okay. He approaches Mitch, who's dressed in an old-timey cowboy outfit, reading over some script pages. Hey, Mr. Cattleman. How are you feeling? All ready to go? Uh, not at all. I feel 0% comfortable saying any of these words or doing any of this. What is all this, Lewis? Oh, God. Uh... Mitch scurries off as Jessica walks up, clocking all the equipment, crew, etc. Uh, we are uh, shooting a commercial. <laughs> a commercial? Why didn't you tell me? How much is this costing us? Well, you have to spend money to make money. I hate it here. I hate Orlando. But it's Orlando. I like that they give away food at the grocery store, but that's it. I miss our family and friends in Washington, D.C. I don't understand these rolling women. And Eddie's having a hard time at school, and Evan is lactose intolerant, and Emery, well, Emery's doing surprisingly well, but all you care about is this stupid restaurant, which you said was doing well, but it's not, and I'm worried about money, and look at my hair. My hair is terrible. Yes, your hair is terrible. So was mine, but I fixed it with product. Jessica takes his hand in hers. I love that you have big dreams. I don't want to lose everything, Lewis. Let's just go home. We can talk to the bank, get out of the restaurant lease, get our old apartment back. My sister says it hasn't been rented yet. No, we can't do that. Why? What's so important that we had to move here and change our whole life? Nancy approaches. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Wong, but the bro is ready for blocking. Reveal a donkey standing there with its handler. We'll discuss this later. Lewis walks off. Jessica points to the donkey. How much did she cost? Interior, middle school, cafeteria, lunch. Eddie swaggers in, carrying his pizza Lunchables. Oh, cool. You got turkey and cheese? I got pizza. He walks up to a microwave on a table and gets in line. We see probably Brock and his friends nearby in a different line for lunch, school lunch. When, out of nowhere, Walter walks up and cuts in line in front of Eddie. Yo, dude, what are you doing? Get used to it. You're the bottom of the social ladder now. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Chinks get to the back. We see probably Brock and his friends react. The cafeteria gets quiet. Close on Eddie's face. Wu-Tang Clan's Protect Your Neck starts to play as we cut to a, mon a montage of moments from the pilot that we've that's pissed him off. The teasing, the teacher butchering his name, gagging on the tuna fish, his shitty dinosaur t-shirt, and something goes off in Eddie. He grabs Walter's hall monitor pass, still around his neck, shoves the plastic part in the microwave, slams the door shut, and turns it on. My official badge! Still attached to the lanyard, Walter watches his pass melt into obscurity through the microwave window. Eddie grabs a bowl of pudding and shoves it in Walter's face. Eat your pudding, bitch! Interior hallway, outside principal's office. Eddie sits on a bench, head down. Emery and Evan sit on another bench, staring at him. Through the closed door of the principal's office, we and they can hear everything. Then, after melting Walter's badge, which is school's property, uh, he shoved dessert in his face and yelled out a cuss word, a bad one. 
This is very serious offense, Mr. and Mrs. Wong. Yes, it is. We are very upset. Eddie listens, br bracing himself. That you didn't do anything to defend Eddie. Excuse me? That boy called our son a chink, and you think that's okay? What are you going to do about that? How come only Eddie's out there? How come that boy isn't in here too? Why aren't his parents here? Or his 40-year-old best friend. And why aren't we talking about the fact that he has a 40-year-old best friend? School's fine with that? I don't think you understand. We're, we're talking about potential uh, suspension. If you suspend our son over this, we will sue you all over in everyone in this place. So fast it'll make your head spin. Hey, it's the American way, right? Exterior, middle school, parking lot, minutes later. The Wong family walks towards the parking lot. Did you really melt a kid's badge? And shove dessert in his face? And call him a bee? Eddie ignores them, looking up at his parents, still stunned. I don't... Why do you... You're my son. We're family. We might get mad sometimes, but we always have each other's back. You do your best not to make waves. But I'll never be mad at you for standing up for yourself, Eddie. This is why. This is why what? Why we moved here. I'm sorry Eddie had to go through this, but it's going to make him stronger. Coming to this new place is going to make us all stronger. When you leave what you know behind, that's when you find out what you're capable of. I came down here and opened a Wild West restaurant because this is the Wild West. There, there is opportunity here to have a better life for our family. I don't want to work for your brother forever. I do have big dreams. I got big plans. Things are okay for things were okay for us back in DC, but I want more than okay for us. You're just trying to get the nut, Dad. I want more than okay for us too. I'm with you. Not for me, also. She takes his hand. They share a moment. Then Oscar Chow is not gay. Oscar Chow cut your bangs. What's his hobby? Eddie's watching, probably Brock and his buddies approach in the parking lot. They see Eddie and stop tense. Then probably Brock and his buddies walk far around Eddie and his family, giving them a wide berth. Yeah, son. A little bit of respect. The Wong family continues to walk towards their car. Big Papa starts playing again as we dissolve to interior, Eddie's bedroom, day. Eddie walks into his room and his eyes widen. On his bed is the brand new Orlando Magic Baseball cap he wanted. Interior, Wong kitchen, continuous. Jessica dries dishes as Eddie runs in, holding his new cap. Mom, thank you. It's super dope. What are you talking about? You got me the Orlando Magic cap. It wasn't me. I didn't buy it. Got it. Uh, wasn't you. Oh, sorry. A beat. Then Eddie smiles and nods in understanding. Got it. Wasn't you. Because if it was you, you'll have to get Emery and Evan hats too. Gotcha. He winks at her and strolls off, past Grandma, watching QVC, and an infomercial advertising sports gear. Well, look who got a credit card. Grandma holds up a Visa card and kisses it. End of Act 3. Interior, Cattleman's Ranch Steakhouse, day. Mitch, dressed as Mr. Cattleman, sits at a table. He has red makeup on his neck. Hey, y'all. When my neck gets red from my white skin being in the yellow sun all day, I like to stop by Cattleman's Ranch, where I can be comfortable among my own kind. He walks to a table where over-the-top country girls sit. Maybe meet my wife, or my cousin, or my cousin wife, for an onion blossom for only two ninety nine. So, come on down, and tell him Cattleman Mitch and his pal, Eric the Donkey, sent ya. Widen to reveal a donkey in a cowboy hat next to him. Hey, take it easy, Eric. Save room for a bottomless cup of coffee with purchase of any dessert after 9 p.m. Pull out to reveal the Wong family watching this on their TV in the living room. Grandma is laughing hard. I thought the donkey was good. Dad, I love you, but that sucked. Mom, Eddie said... Shut, Shut up, up Evan. Not, Evan. What's a cousin wife? Maybe the food is the problem. I don't know. End of show. Yay, so many memories. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was like, oh, Jesus. This is so sad, but it's so great. Uh, it's amazing. Awesome. Miss you guys. Yeah. Miss you too. Miss all you guys. Um, now what do we do? Yeah, now we just.
Oh, I think we uh, go. Can we say bye. We go. Bye. Okay. bye. Uh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> that was fantastic. Oh, my God. You guys are so – that was brilliant. I mean, it's it – I, I, I have to say, uh, I was the whole time, I was trying to kind of live tweet both episodes. Right. Uh, I, honestly, the Kim's episode was a tour de force, uh, just <laughs> people popping back and forth. <laughs> uh, and you, oh, you guys are, are, I cannot wait to see the next two seasons of this show. That's all I'm wow. going to say. You guys Thank so you great. so much. Well, you know, uh, watching the, the cast fresh off the boat. I mean, I, I saw that premiere episode, like we watched it. We were so excited because it was the first time an Asian family was going to be uh, in, a, in a long time on, on a network show. And we, we sat and we, I mean, it was just, I remember that episode. I can still, you know, picture, you know, seeing the images in my head of that episode. It was a seminal moment for me as well as a, as a performer, as an Asian. And, uh, you know, luckily enough, a few years later, we, we were proud of Kim's. So th it's such an honor to finally share the same sort of airwaves the same night um, with, with that fantastic cast and, and great scripts. I miss that family so much, including the one who is actually a part of my family. <laughs> <laughs> I see him all the time, though. Um, but for all you guys in the audience, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us this incredible night. I want to just share uh, that we have already raised uh, over uh, $7,800 uh, on the US side and uh, 6,936 Canadian dollars on the Canadian side uh, for the organizations we're supporting. It's incredibly important. They, they really need this in this time. Uh, and anybody who has donated, uh, you should check your email boxes because uh, you should have a link to join the Q&A, which will start in about uh, five minutes or so. Um, and uh, we, we just, you know, thank you guys so much for supporting this, for being a part of this, this unique event. Uh, thank you to uh, the casts, obviously, who have been just incredible early on signing on to do this, even though they're all over the place right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Seamus in Australia, <laughs> among other things. <laughs> um, and, uh, and Paul, thank you so much to you. Oh, no, Jeff. Thank you. It was an absolute honor and a pleasure. But I also want to reach out and say thank you so much to the Seed and Spark team. Oh, yeah. uh, Shana, who's our technical director, who's been switching us back and forth. Emily and uh, Brie, uh, Brie Ca I can't Castellini. Yeah. Castellini. Yeah. And, um, and of course, um, oh, my God. Uh, her name's in the email thread, and she's she. I can see her spot in the Zoom whenever we have the Zoom. Christina, Christina. I'm so yeah. sorry, Christina. <laughs> I, my brain is melted. Um, it's it's 10:23 over here. We're gonna start the Q and A in a few minutes. Uh, for the Canadians who are out there who are still there, if you can donate, please donate. We were beating the Americans. I just have to say this: we were beating the Americans in terms. Of, not that it's a contest, but we were there, uh, and they've now since surpassed us. So let's let's show some of that Canadian go-to spirit and let's see if we can uh, hit that target goal tonight or if not within the next few days remember this this live stream is being recorded and it'll still be available for those of us who couldn't make it this night but thank you thank you thank you so much for for tuning in for watching uh it, it was a tremendous amount um of nostalgia that i felt tonight and uh at kim's we're raring to go we're ready to to start shooting season five and six we just you know we're being delayed because of the pandemic but plans are in place and uh you know there there's 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 hope there's light at the end of the tunnel so without further ado jeff is there anything else you want to say no uh just that you know we are gl glad that we have this little piece of uh, north american unity we want to stand in unity with our Black brothers and sisters, uh, we want to reach out to all of you who have yeah. been supporters of these shows uh, and ask you also to support the efforts to uh, rebuild those communities, to support yeah. uh, people who have been dramatically harmed by the incidents that have occurred uh, in both legal defense, uh, supporting protesters, and supporting, again, the cleanup of, of communities that have been harmed. Uh, please join us in the Q&A if you guys have donated and have that link. Uh, we'll be over there shortly, and uh, it'll be led by none other than Three time uh, award winning. <laughs> Three times. Uh, Andrew Fun. So uh, we'll, we'll see you over there in, uh, let's say, 7 30. All right? 10 30 Eastern. Okay, 10 30. see you. <laughs> okay, see you. <laughs>